My name is Michael Spicurla. I'm the Executive Director with, this county office, with the San Luis Obispo County Office of Education. Welcome to the Ticket to Teach virtual information session for applicants. We're so glad you want to learn more about this opportunity and made possible through the partnership of the San Luis Obispo County Office of Education, Cuesta College, First Five of San Luis Obispo County, Capslo, and Paso Robles Unified School District. Today, we'll be covering the topics of why did we start this apprenticeship program? What are the expectations of applicants to the apprenticeship? How do I apply for an apprenticeship? Please use the Q&A feature on the Zoom to ask questions during the presentation and answers will be responded to throughout the program. I'd like to turn the uh, program over to Michelle Gordon Johnson, Katie Mervin, and Christina Vastin from Cuesta College. We're going to lead the show. Michelle? Hello, everybody. I think Michelle's on mute. Um, I'm so happy you're all here. I am so happy that you took time out of your Wednesday evening. If you're in the North County like me, it's very hot, so you're happy to be inside anyway. Um, I just want to give you a little bit of information about the program and why we are doing it and how excited we are to have you be interested and, and be involved. Um, so we're talking about why we're doing this Ticket to Teach program in San Luis County. Um, first of all, our county, along with the state of California, has a historical critical shortage of professionals in this field. Um, it's a field that is very, very needed. Um, it's a field that's very important. If you have taken ECE classes, you know how much of the brain develops in the first five years. You know how much we support families, um, how critical we are to the community and the economy. Um, and there has always been a shortage of qualified early childhood educators. Um, and we also know that the demand for care, the families who need care, exceeds the capacity. Um, there are not enough slots for families to receive the care that they need in order to go to work, in order to do the things that they need to do daily to survive. Um, one of the other reasons why, why this program is so important is that there has been low pay for professionals in this field, and that's something that this initiative, as, as well as other initiatives in the county, such as We Are the Care, are working really hard to change to make sure that these wonderful people who are highly educated and highly experienced get the pay that they deserve. Um, Ticket to Teach is an apprenticeship program. So an apprenticeship program means that it's paid on the job training that's paired with classroom classroom learning and also other supports such as um, mentorship, professional development. Um, it's really a program that's there to support um, the applicants in their, the, their whole experience and the whole process. Um, and it also addresses the challenge of increased demand for early educational care and support and the low wages. Um, it's designed to support both the individuals who are interested in entering the field. So if this is a field that you've been interested in and you think maybe would be the right fit for you, um, this would be a great way for you to start to, to learn about it, to take classes, to get more information, to get some really cool professional development experiences. And then this is also meant for people who are already in the ECE field, who are already professionals, who are working in centers, um, and that way they can build not only their knowledge and their experience, but also they can upgrade permits, um, they can work on their credentials. There's gonna be a lot of ways for people at different levels to, to uh, be supported by this program. And I'm gonna hand it over to Michelle. Thanks, Katie. So I'm gonna get into the details. Um, we'll talk about the two levels. I'll specifically talk about the pre-apprentices and then Katie will talk about um, the apprentice opportunities. Just, uh, I'm Michelle Gordon Johnson. I'm ECE lead faculty at Cuesta College. Um, and I'm guessing I know a fair number of um, individuals on this call. So um, good, to, thanks for showing up. I really appreciate it. So in terms of the pre-apprentice level, we're looking at um, the education of a minimum of six ECE units. So if you're thinking about your own, um, where you are in the process, um, if you've had EC201 and EC202, you're well on the way to getting started. 
So if you haven't, um, ECE 201 or 202, you might consider it summer session, but the goal is that you'll have a minimum of six um, EC units at this point, and you'll add six additional units in the fall, fall 2020, and those courses will include ECE 201, 202, 203, and 205. Those are the specific EC courses you'll need to be at the assistant teacher level. So the fall semester is really devoted to or focused on um, obtaining the units necessary to uh, move further with the program. And so you'll spend one semester at the pre-apprentice level. Uh, that At that level, we'll have bi-monthly cohort meetings. Um, we'll make sure that everyone who's involved has a student educational plan that we'll do through the counselors at Cuesta College, making sure that um, you have a plan for the time remaining at Cuesta. Um, and we'll connect you with an academic success coach that, so that you'll be successful in your courses. We want to support you on your academic pathway to earn an AA in ECE. Earning an AA in ECE ensures that you have a child development permit at the master teacher level. And we also encourage you to go further um, and to consider transferring to a bachelor's program. Um, and so that would be uh, the transfer degree, and those two degrees are very aligned. Um, there is not a, a lot of additional coursework to obtain the transfer degree along with the AA. So now we're looking at spring 2021. You have 12 units in ECE, um, and you're eligible to work in the field. You can work as an assistant teacher. You can also work as a substitute teacher. So to move to that next step, we will have apprenticeship in interviews January 2021 um, and to meet with all the pre-apprentices individually. Um, at that point, um, we will begin to place um, our now apprentices at designated sites. And these are um, paid apprenticeship positions that Katie will go into in far more detail. Um, and along with the paid apprenticeship positions, you will have financial assistance with Cuesta College, including support with your textbooks. Um, so that is um, an overview of the pre-apprentice program. I'm gonna give you some key dates, and then we're gonna have an opportunity before we move on to the apprentice program to check in and see if you have any questions. So at this point, if there are some details you feel like you're missing other than dates, which I'm launching into in a minute, um, please go ahead and type that in the Q&A. So in terms of key dates, um, Monday, June 8th at noon, your online application is due. That's the deadline. Christina, um, at the end of our session, will uh, bring that information up, she'll share with you the link, and she'll answer any questions about how you would go ahead and fill that out and submit it. Then the week of June 8th, we'll be notifying individuals who are selected to be a pre-apprentice um, and um, sort of thinking ahead from there. Week of August 3rd, um, we're beginning to gear up for Cuesta's fall term. Um, there will be a welcoming and onboarding meeting during that week. Uh, Monday, August 17th, our fall term begins, and um, we will at the same time begin our pre-apprentice cohort meetings and professional development activities. Uh, in terms of thinking about how time-consuming this will be, uh, we're looking at bi-monthly meetings that will work with your schedule and other opportunities to um, gain skills and to grow as a professional in the field during fall. And then January um, 2021, you will move to the next level through um, apprenticeship selection interview. So it's not an automatic process. It's one in which you ne would need to um, fill out the, you know, the, the application and interview for apprenticeship, apprenticeship positions. Um, so there's the overview. Uh, questions, um, Christina's gonna take a look in the Q&A and we'll see if we have any questions. 
Um, and then we'll move to Katie talking about the apprenticeship program. Hey, thank you for being here. As mentioned, my name is Christina. I'm a coordinator for grant funded programs at Cuesta College and I'll be facilitating some of the questions. So we'll give you 30 seconds or so in case there's anything that's come in. At this point, we don't have any questions. So if you're typing one, um, great question. We did have one come in. So will there be an opportunity each semester to apply for the pre-apprenticeship? Great question. So yes, it is an ongoing uh, program and so we will be onboarding or bringing in pre-apprentices each semester who will follow the same process I described, just a different timeline. Um, if you are um, too early in your academic um, uh, sort of trajectory to be a pre-apprentice, I still really want to connect with you and make sure that you have a student educational plan and make sure you're in the loop. So we're, we're not counting you out if you don't have the units um, and, and we'll, we'll sort of make sure we take those names down and contact information. Thanks, Michelle. There was a question too about if this lecture would be available at a later time. We will be recording it and we will send it to all folks that signed up and have it available on uh, our different entities' websites. So um, we'll keep that available for you. Um, someone asked the question of, does it matter which ECE degree they are pursuing? And another question is too, if the only degree choice is the AST or the AA, but does that include the AAT? Okay, so um, the AA in ECE um, provides the uh, necessary courses for the child development permit at the master teacher level. Um, it is um, the tw uh, eight core courses, the 24 units plus six specialization units, um, and then um, an admin mentoring class, ECE 245. The AST um, would, could be earned simultaneously, and that um, would allow that individual to transfer. Uh, in terms of the um, AAT, I think, Christina, help me here. I think we're talking about the same degrees, just so they're both tra a transfer degree in ECE. Some of our um, students who are interested in ECE are doing the child and adolescent transfer degree which is um, a great transfer degree. It doesn't give you the EC classes that would be required to uh, work in the early childhood profession in terms of in the classroom as an early childhood educator. I'm not discouraging that degree, just saying um, that in terms of um, for this program, you need specific EC classes and those are in our AA. Uh, degree. Katie, anything you want to add to that? Not that you haven't covered from the questions that were asked, but there's a couple more questions in the chat room that I think we can address. Good questions, okay. you guys. I'm, I'm impressed. You guys already have so much knowledge. You're testing Put our me on the spot. <laughs> testing my knowledge. <laughs> So we did have a question about the coursework that you outlined, Michelle, and students were, or someone was asking if they already have those classes completed that are required for the pre-apprenticeship. So then um, if you already had moved through many of the degree or most of the degree courses, I think that um, Katie will cover in terms of what next steps would look like. So what I'm addressing in terms of the pre-apprentice stage is for those who are very early in um, their EC major. Um, for those later in their EC major um, who may or may not be employed, Katie's going to get the details um, for that. And then I saw also one about an elementary school teacher. Um, would this program be appropriate? Um, in terms of, I mean, there is no, I. We believe there is no better major in terms of setting a foundation, a solid foundation of knowledge to be an elementary school teacher. Um, to have that background in child development, child guidance, um, and that theoretical knowledge um, will absolutely set the stage for success in that profession. That said, some of our elementary, um, uh, those who want to be an elementary school teacher are choosing to be choosing the education major. 
And if you choose the education major, again, a great major, but it doesn't set you up for the child development permit courses or to have the necessary ECE units to work in the ECE field. So what we're talking about is a licensing requirement. Licensing requires that anyone working in an early childhood, at an early childhood site, have a minimum of 12 units. Um, and so the elementary ed degree, again, although very appropriate for those who want to be an elementary educator, would not offer that. Um, you can um, quite successfully use an ECE uh, major, an ECE degree, to um, as a degree for elementary ed. It, it would be very appropriate um, and could align with the bachelors that you move on to. Thanks, Michelle. Uh, so there was a question about students who may have those ECE courses from another institution and verifying that they could bring in those classes from somewhere besides Cuesta College. Yes, and so we have counselors that um, could assist those students in matching the EC classes from other colleges with our courses. So um, we have students that come to Cuesta that, you know, I'll, I'll get the form with four or five EC classes they have taken um, somewhere else, and we're able to then identify which classes at Cuesta um, those mirror and um, make the appropriate adjustments to their degree. So absolutely, California has done a really um, fantastic job of aligning our courses so they're somewhat seamless from uh, community college to community college. Thank you, and you somewhat addressed this in your question, but someone was wanting to know if this ECE apprenticeship would include general education, and they were curious about what types of lessons they would be learning in the program. Okay, so in terms of general ed, that the support, the academic support would certainly cover the general education classes. So I talked earlier about an academic success coach, and, and that academic success coach, coach cares about all of the students' classes and provides support for all of the students' classes. So to earn an AA or an AST and ECE, those general class, um, education classes would be required, um, and we certainly recognize that within the grant and support students in obtaining their degrees. There is a, a priority or a value in obtaining those degrees and even moving on to transfer. And then the lessons learned, well, that, that's a big question. <laughs> um, you know, I, I think in terms of our, uh, in terms of sort of prioritizing what is important to us, there is both um, a focus on professional development in the field, professional ethics, professional behavior, professional expectations, um, coupled with um, truly a passion for uh, child development and understanding the developing child, understanding challenging behaviors, understanding appropriate ways to guide children. So in terms of lessons, um, I mean, I hope that not I hope that, I know that those that go through this experience, this apprenticeship experience, will be highly skilled um, in their actual classroom skills, as well as in very um, well-versed in um, child development, child trauma, child guidance, um, and um, very current in their knowledge base. Hopefully that answered. And I want to add a little bit more to that. When you get this experience in, in an on the job and on, on the job setting, um, you're really bridging that gap between education and experience. And when you get to put into practice what you learn about early childhood environments and um, guidance strategies, it really solidifies the knowledge for you and gives you something that you can really carry forward when you're using the California state tools um, and publications in your actual on the job training, um, it's going to really help you build your practical skills in, in a more meaningful way than even, even though I'm a wonderful, wonderful teacher and so is Michelle. Um, it, what you can get when you um, really put that into practice in a classroom is um, immeasurable. Thank you both. Um, so the last question for this section is gauging how much, how many hours 
a week of commitment they're looking at for this uh, pre-apprentice program. Right, so um, I'm glad that you separated out the pre-apprentice and the apprenticeship because uh, Katie will address um, time commitment in terms of the apprenticeship. In terms of the pre-apprentice, the priority um, is the individual's classes, um, the academic classes that they're taking. We envision um, twice monthly cohort meetings um, in the afternoon and early evening, um, hopefully not always on Zoom, um, where we have an opportunity to um, get to know one another and really build a sense of community. Uh, but in terms of you know, other activities like meeting with um, the counselors at Cuesta College, developing a student educational plan, all of that is, is just a, a way to support your own success and make sure that you move through your courses without duplication or taking unnecessary classes. So um, there isn't a significant time commitment um, with the pre-apprentice level other than obviously the classes that one would take. Um, and it's really just to build a sense of community and, and, and begin to move toward that apprenticeship. Okay, well, thank you, Katie and Michelle. That addressed all the questions for this round. Wonderful. Okay, we can turn it over to Katie to dig deep into the apprenticeship program. Okay, you guys are inspiring me. You have so much knowledge already. These questions are wonderful. I can tell that you already know so much about the program and what degrees you might need. Um, and, and you have a good idea of, of where you're headed already. So I'm going to speak to the apprenticeship part of the program. So pre-apprenticeship is that, that educational um, building, the educational building and getting into the program. When we talk about the apprenticeship program, we are talking about you getting that paid on the job experience. Um, it is a two year commitment. So when we bring you into this program, we um, let you know all of the requirements, the expectations. We have a group of employers that we partner with. They are all wonderful quality sites. They, are, they participate in the Quality Counts program. All the employers receive professional development. They know about all the tools that we talk about in the classes. And when you're brought into the program, you are there to work at these programs. We want you to be in the field. We want you to gain that experience while you're getting the education. Each program does have their own um, setup, their own hours that they run. Some run during the school year, some run half day, some run full day. So there are a lot of different options. There isn't going to be a minimum of 15 hours per week that you would be required to work. This is to ensure that not only are you getting plenty of experience, but those employers also have you as a valuable employee who's getting um, plenty of time to build relationships, to work on those skills and get to implement those in the classroom. So some people might be coming in to upskill. A lot of you, it sounds like you already have so much information and you might have already taken a lot of those classes. You were talking about general education requirements. Um, when we're talking about employees who are looking to upskill, they're looking to earn that next degree or upgrade their permit. So some of the classes that they might be taking, um, I know when I was going to Cuesta, I did this, I waited till the very last second to take biology and math. So those were the two classes that I needed to get in order to get my degree. Um, those would be perfectly, um, those would be perfect classes to take if you needed to get some units in those nine in the nine unit requirement per year educational year um, also one example is when we're upgrading our permits for the site supervisor and the program director permit you would need the um, the, ad, the administration unit, sorry, I lost my words, the administration unit. So that is nine units right there. You'd have the two administration units and the adult supervision units. And that would be a whole year of your education and you would get to um, really integrate those into your position and work with your mentor teacher um, in order to really figure out how to utilize the knowledge that you're building at Cuesta College into your program. Um, and also you would have a chance to do your projects in your actual program, which is a really big benefit. Um, the educational components, like I said, you have to have nine units per academic year, which means at the end of the two year apprenticeship, you'll be taking 18 units. 
Um, some other examples of those courses, um, we have some courses that address children with special needs, um, the administration courses, the infant toddler courses, um, and then also we have many activity classes um, and we have some one unit classes. So if you're feeling like you really want to get those specialization units for the master teacher program or permit, then you would be able to take those along with maybe some general ed. So the program, the educational component of the program is really meant to fit your needs. And we would still have you work with a counselor. Um, we'd have you work with your mentor teacher, but we want this to fit what you need in your educational plan and in your, um, in your career path too. So one of the really wonderful benefits of this program is you will receive financial assistance and support from Cuesta College. And when I say that, um, from the Ticket to Teach program, by the way, when I say that you would receive, um, your units would be paid for, and then you would also receive money for textbooks, which we all know that some of the textbooks are, are pretty steep in cost, and that can be a barrier to, to taking classes. But we want everyone in this program to be completely successful and make sure that they get all the, the support that they need. Um, when we look at professional development and support, the mentor teachers who are working at the specific partner sites will be qualified to support you in many of the things that you're doing. So whether you're talking about helping, um, helping you in your courses and just trying to figure out some concepts that are, that are a little bit out there um, or that you're having a little bit of trouble grasping, um, we're also bringing on professional support from Quality Counts. You'll get trainings on the different tools that we talk about. So if I throw around the acronyms DRDP, ASQ, the class tool, um, we make sure that the mentor teachers you work with have knowledge of those tools so they can support you, whether you're using them in the classroom or in a course. Um, the apprenticeship, the apprentices are placed at designated programs. So I really wanna clarify what that means. We have partner sites and each partner site will actually be an employer. You will sign a contract with them. They will pay your paycheck. Um, you will have to abide by all of, all of their company policies. You will have to go through an interview to make sure that you are the right fit for that program. So when we say placed, we will be providing the opportunity for you to interview with those programs and find the right fit. Um, everyone in the program will receive wages at or above $15 per hour. That is really important to our whole initiative in this field, making sure that you, as the wonderful professionals who are shaping the future, are making livable wages. And that's just the start. We really hope that this continues and, and we can build on this program and this initiative. Um, we do have grant funds to support the employers to meet that minimum wage requirement. So if you're out job hunting right now, you might notice that some of the jobs aren't advertising that they can pay at least $15 per hour. The grant program will be helping um, the employers to, to ensure that you will be receiving that wage when you start your apprenticeship program. Um, I'm going to go over some key dates for this part of the, of the section, and then we'll be definitely answering any of the questions you have. So on Monday, June 8th at noon, we definitely want you to turn in your online applications. Even if you're not completely sure that this is your path, turn in an application and we can, we'll reach out to you and we'll have a conversation and we want to support you and make sure that this is what you want to do, or, you know, we can just help answer questions and clarify things for you. On Friday, June 19th, you'll be notified of program interviews. So if you're a finalist, we'll let you know when the program interviews are. and We'll be working with those partner sites to set those up. And those will happen on August 3rd to 6th. So one of the things I really want you to be sure of is if this is something you want to do, that you do have a clear schedule for at least some of those days um, because we can't guarantee that you would get August 3rd or August 6th. It just will depend on the employer and what they have available. On Friday, August 7th, quick turnaround. We'll notify the program of program selection. We'll let you guys know what if you were chosen as an apprentice. And from then, we'll move on to signing training and employment plans that will be very specific. Um, the week of August 10th, we'll complete a welcome and onboarding meeting. So 
lots of information for that, lots of time to answer questions. Um, the employers will be invited to be there. Everybody will be on the same page and we'll really get off on a good foot. Um, and then on Monday, August 17th, the Quest to College fall term begins. So we all need to be ready to, to be taking those classes and, and starting those units to make sure that um, we're, we're building all of our skills and our knowledge. So, I think that I finished what was on the slide, but I definitely, I know that there might be some questions and I hope I can answer them. I will do that to the best of my ability. Thanks, Katie. Um, so currently, there's a question about um, the permit fees for students who are going through the um, different early childhood education state permits and if this program could support that. That is a great question that has not been addressed specifically yet, but um, I'm currently the CDTC coordinator for Cuesta College and I can definitely help navigate that process. Um, if you are applying for the lower level permits, then the CDTC will pay for them. And that's definitely something we can address within the grant because that would be a great use of the funds. Thanks, Katie. Ooh, um, good one. I'm, I'm sorry, now I'm taking over your job, Christina. No, it's okay. It's just, I don't know that over. all those students can see the questions, so I'm just reiterating them in case. Okay, but um, the question is, is if anyone has worked full time while doing the apprenticeship piece. So that's a great question, and I, I meant to address that when I talked about 15 hours. 15 hours is the minimum. Um, some sites will only be able to accommodate a 15 hour per week work week. Some sites will need you there for more hours. Um, they're definitely counting on you to be there as one of their employees. So you, when you interview with the different sites, you can go in knowing you really need to work 15 hours because that, that works better in your schedule. Or you can be upfront and say, I'm really looking for more hours. I'm really looking for this to be a full-time job. And just depending on what the employers need and what you need, that's when we find that, that right fit. Um, so there was another question about if uh, apprentices will be able to pick the age group or the grade that they are working with specifically. So again, that, that's kind of determined upon employer need. You can definitely go in saying, I would love to work with infants, or I really, really want to work with older preschoolers. We love that when people have that idea, um, this is definitely a, a job, a, a position. So it will depend on the employer and you know if they have a job open, a, a teacher position open in the infant room, they'll definitely let you know that that's what they are hiring for. But you know we have quite a few different employers that we have already signed on and we're looking forward to, to bringing on more. So there will definitely be some different opportunities in, in the age groups that we have. Thanks. And one of the questions was, would, you know, would I be working at a daycare? So I think you were just, you know, alluding to that, that we have, do have a variety of different types of programs that are available. And I tend to not say daycare. I tend to say either care center. Um, there's many different kinds of sites. Um, you could be working at a private site. You could be working at a public, at a state preschool site, um, at the Cuesta College Children's Center. So there's definitely many different sites and many different philosophies. Um, and it will really depend on who comes on as a partner employer in the future. All right, thanks Katie. Uh, so someone did have a question about the timeline that if they were to enter as a pre-apprentice, um, would the apprenticeship program after that be two years? More than likely, yes. Um, there may be the ability to start as a substitute and get some hours, but when you sign on to this, I also, as an, I'm gonna speak as an employer for a moment, I do look for people who are gonna be there for, for a year or two, for, for a time commitment, because not only are you working a job and, and gaining experience, but you're building relationships with those families and those children in, in our centers. And that's what we really hold dear is that we provide them with consistent teachers, that we make sure we have a developmentally appropriate environment, um, that we have as little turnover as possible. So we do want you there for the long haul. And after the apprenticeship program is over, you may be offered a position, a career position. So that's always something to keep in mind that this is not just meant for you to take two years and say, I'm done. Um, whereas if you want to go on to a four year or move away, that, that's totally fine. But if you're looking to make this a career and you really want to work with, with a, 
a company or a center that you have grown to love, that's always an option. Thanks. And so um, I think folks are looking for maybe a little more clarification on what types of sites are available. And one of the questions that came up was what age ranges in this program, or does this program include so pre-K, elementary, or higher? Mm -hmm. So if This program is definitely dedicated to zero to five. Um, we don't have the ability to place people in TK kindergarten sites. Um, that's not the degree or, or credential program that we are gearing for, but there could be opportunities to move to that path later on. Um, like Michelle was saying, and I saw that Dr. Brescia kind of, kind of clarified that too, um, early childhood education and child development is such a wonderful base to start your career path with when you want to work with humans of any age. Um, you know how, how the brain works. You know how to speak to people. You know how to work with families. You know how to manage a classroom. Um, you know about positive reinforcement um, and what children need, what is, what is developmentally appropriate. And that is important knowledge whether you're working with three-year-olds or whether you're working with 16-year-olds. Um, when you go into a classroom, knowing how to work with humans of any age, you're gonna be more successful in what you do. Thanks, Katie. So for right now, there is one additional question that came up and it was in regards to um, an applicant and their residency and if that would affect their ability to get the state um, ECE permits and their eligibility for the program. I think without getting into too much detail and asking too many questions, that might be a good one to email us um, because we might be able to get into more specifics um, and, just, and just know where we can get those answers and, and address different situations. Perfect. A uh, question just came in and it asked um, if general education classes count towards the six credits that are needed or just the ECE classes. As long as you're working towards a degree or, or have a need for that course, that definitely counts. Like I was saying, the example of um, I, I waited for a long time to take math and science. And if I were in my last year of Cuesta and I hadn't taken those courses, that would definitely count towards this. We want you to earn your degree. We want you to upgrade your permit. And whatever that looks like for you in your situation with your educational background will we'll help you structure that. Perfect, thank you. And just to clarify, um, sort of in terms of, of units, for the pre-apprentice, it's six EC units um, to, to participate in the pre-apprentice, and then six additional EC units um, fall 2020 and those are the specific classes 201 202 203 and 205 and then the nine units that are required to um, each academic year to continue could be um, either GE and or ECE units depending on your degree needs um, what you have left if you're looking for ECE admin or ECE special needs. So if you wanted some specialization in terms of infants and toddlers or special needs. Um, but um, the pre-apprentice units are those ECE units, even though you're probably working or uh, taking general ed classes at the same time. And you can mix and match. Maybe you need a math class and two administration classes. You can, that's definitely something you can do. Thank you. So the last question for this section is uh, basically asking that, asking if this program only works with being a teacher and not necessarily a clerical or administrative pathway. It's definitely geared towards teaching, but if you're going to be working, I mean, there's a lot of different career paths that you might be able to take with this degree or, you know, that it would lend itself to. Um, so that's kind of a, a personal situation specific question also. So if, if I'm just not thinking about what that might mean or, or I'm thinking about it in a different way, send us an email so that we can get more clarification. I think, I think that would be a good idea. And the EC department has um, three administration classes in EC, 244, 245, and 248. I think it's being renamed. Anyway, all the 40 somethings. And um, so certainly that site supervisor permit 
um, would be an opportunity um, once you've reached the master teacher level. And so if you're thinking about administration and ECE, there is that opportunity in terms of coursework and experience. I mean, that may be the possibility that we could look at what sort of mentoring would be available at the administration level, at the site supervisor level. Thanks, Michelle. So that wraps up the questions for this portion. Wonderful. Okay, so you got the chance to hear from all of us this afternoon, and we will be sending this information to all of the participants and the folks that weren't able to make it with our contact information. So um, don't feel like you have to frantically write this down. We will be sending this out. Um, as mentioned, my name is Christina Vastine, and I am on the back end helping with any technical questions you may have on the application itself. Um, and so my contact information is on this slide. And again, you'll be getting this at the end of this evening or tomorrow. Um, if we can go to the next slide. Um, hopefully some of you have had the opportunity to go to our ticket website. Uh, we're going to go ahead and click on it now. Just a reminder, the application deadline is going to be noon on Monday, June 8th. And you'll actually see on the website there where the um, mouse is, where the link is to the online application. So if you have any questions about what's in that online application or um, anything technical that comes up, please feel free to reach out to me before um, the application deadline. And if you realize that in three days you had a question that was burning and you'd like to ask one of us directly specifically, don't hesitate to send us an email. Um, we are very happy to help support you at whether you apply to the program or not. Um, it's all, it's, I, I'll speak for myself, but I know that at least most of us think this, um, we want to support you in your educational goals. We want to support you in your career. And whether that means that you apply to this specific program or you say, oh, that doesn't really sound like a fit for me, but you know, what would you suggest if I wanted to do this or this? I'm sure all of us would be very happy to help you and, and give, you, give you a guide. I want to thank everybody for their time. I uh, hope you'll take advantage of this wonderful opportunity. Please apply and reach out to us if you have any questions. Thanks, everyone. Have a good night. Thank you.